Hello there everyone, Matt here with the virtualinstructor.com and in this video I'd like to share with you a time lapse that was taken from seven one hour long recorded live lessons in which we create an oil painting of a landscape and this landscape features a sunrise over the ocean. Now this complete lesson series is presented in real time and is it available to members at the virtualinstructor.com along with all of our video courses, weekly live lessons, all of our recorded live lessons, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. If you want to check out our program, you can do so. Everyone starts with a week-long trial for free. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, in this lesson series, we created a, a scene of a sunrise over the ocean using water-mixable oils on oil-primed linen panel. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the time lapse. Now, before we applied any paint to the surface, we started by priming the canvas, and we did so with a bit of yellow ochre. This, of course, is acrylic paint, so it dried quickly. This underpainting basically allowed some of the color to show through, leading to overall a warmer painting, which is what we were after in this particular case. Then I went ahead and defined the horizon line, or in this case, the line where the water met the sky, and then started working on that transition of color that happened in the background, the sky. Whenever you're working with an opaque painting medium like oils or acrylics, you typically want to start with the background, work to the middle ground, and then address the foreground in the latter stages of the painting since you can overlap the painting applications that you apply to the surface. Of course, we went ahead and painted in that sun. The sun is going to be the focal point in this particular painting, so it was a good idea to establish that as quickly as possible. And then from there, we continued to work on that transition of colors that happened behind the clouds, actually. So we wanted to establish those transitions of colors, those yellows and those oranges, all the way up to the blues before we started painting in the clouds. And you can see I spent quite a bit of time here working on the transition of color and value emitted from the sun. Then once our background was in place, or I should say the sky beyond the clouds was in place, it was time to go ahead and paint the shapes for the clouds. And in this particular composition I wanted to alter it a little bit to bring more attention down to the Sun so you'll notice there's a slight curvature added to the clouds here hoping uh, or I did this hoping to pull the viewers eye closer to the Sun of course as you can see here, the clouds that I'm adding or the shapes of the clouds that I'm adding here are definitely more purple than what we see in the photo reference. In the photo reference, the clouds are definitely more blue gray. In this particular case or in the painting, I wanted to pull out a little bit more of the purples, more of the oranges and exaggerate some of the colors in the ocean so that they leaned a little bit more towards the green side of things. Uh, this, of course, would create more of a uh, secondary color scheme, which is a color triad of colors. So the secondary colors, purple, orange, and green, of course. Now, the greens in this painting are very, very subtle, but the purples and orange are quite dominant. And you can see at this point, once we put the basic shapes in, I went back and started to push the value range. So I'm adding both darker and lighter values, hoping to create a bit of an illusion of form of these clouds. After all, clouds are actually forms, so they're going to have highlights and and shadows just like any other form. In this particular case, of course, our main light source is originating from the sun in the distance. So some of these highlights actually exist on the lower portion of the clouds instead of the upper portion, as you might expect. Of course, there are still a few highlights on the upper portion of the clouds, but some of our strongest and warmest highlights actually happen on the bottom portion of the clouds. Now, of course, one of the advantages to working with oils is that they dry slowly, but since this demonstration was spread out over seven lessons, this is seven weeks, basically, of working on the same painting, some of the areas dried up in between our lesson sessions, and this forced me to go back and do some some changes to the painting. Uh, in other words, I had to go back and add some areas to make sure that they were wet so that I could create smoother transitions between colors and values. So parts of the painting were approached more like an acrylic painting where we're applying uh, opaque applications or semi-opaque applications over the top of dry applications and other portions of the painting were applied wet into wet, uh, allowing us to create smoother transitions of tone and value. And as you can see, I continued to work on this area around the 
sun. This, of course, is an important part of the painting, adding additional oranges and yellows, and of course, developing the shapes of the clouds here as they recede in the distance. Then it was time to move on below the horizon line, and we started with a very dark blue initially with some hints of some green in there just from mixing a bit of yellow. And then before diving into the details of the water, we went ahead and established some of the overall shapes, of color, and value in the beach below, of course, the water. You can see a lot of the colors that we see in the beach below are actually reflections of the colors and values that we saw in the sky. So here again, we saw a lot of purples and a lot of oranges and yellows here as well. You can see I used the brush to blend these colors together. In this case, I was working wet into wet, so I had the advantage of wet oil paint here, and you can see how that turned out. Then we went back into the water and started developing the highlights and shadows here and some of the middle values, really basically developing the, the texture the textures and of course the form of the water here and if uh, you've been around for a while you know that the key to creating the illusion of texture lies in the relationships of values value is the darkness or lightness of a color value of course also helps us understand uh, where the light source is originating from and also the form as well value is so incredibly important so we continued to work down the right side of the paint the painting basically working our way down to the lower part of the picture plane here i'm adding a few indications of some highlights and ripples using a bit of a light yellow mixture. And then of course we needed to add some of the details in the shoreline here. So again, the details, um, and I say that in quotations, are really just shapes of different values and colors. And our mind actually puts this information together. So it's very important to trust what you're seeing in your subject and try to incorporate what you see as far as shapes of color and value in your painting. And typically things will turn out just fine in your painting. After a few a little subtle changes here, for the most part, our painting was getting near the end, but I decided to go back and add a few series of glazes over the top. And here's what our painting looked like before I added glazes. And then here's a look at what our painting looked like after I added glazes. Now, glazes are basically just translucent applications of color over the top of dried applications of paint. And in this case, I just brought up a little bit more of the warmth of the painting and strengthen the contrast and some of the values. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. If you're new to the channel or you just haven't done so yet, I suggest that you subscribe. We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting media and subject matter on this channel. If you want to check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free, you can do so. I'll leave a link in the description below. And also don't forget to check out our membership program, which includes video courses on drawing and painting, weekly live lessons, weekly critiques and answered questions as part of the Members Minute, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. Again, I'll leave a link to our membership program in the description below this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.